Hey, this is Joseph Lebrecht, and we're going to be looking over the AS3 WebVTT demos that are included inside of the repository. So to get the repository, you just go to github.com slash du dash OTL slash AS3 dash WebVTT. And you can download it from here and view the readme to see exactly what you need to do. But it also has a project that you can use to sort of see how everything works. This is a pure ActionScript 3 project. And this is set up in a pretty minimal way. Uh, basically, what we do is we have this uh, main ActionScript file. And then we have, of course, the entire library right here. So edu.du.captions. And in there, we've got our data folder with the captions parser. We've got a couple of events here, so a load event and a parse event, and then the utilities, which include the captions handler and time formatter. Now, the only thing you actually need to deal with is the captions handler, but you can, of course, take advantage of the different events that we have as well. There's also an assets folder, which includes a sample VTT and MP4 combo. So here, I begin by declaring a number of different things, of course, such as the video holder, which is a uh, video object, the captions handler instance. So if we look at our imports here, we're importing our captions handler. So here we make an instance of that. And we have a captions display, which is our text field. So these are the minimum things that you need to get this working, is just the video object, the captions handler object, and our text field object. So once you have all that stuff, you just go ahead and build out your application. So for instance, I'm creating a timer here, which is gonna control when I actually go through to check to see if there is a caption or not. Um, you can see that I create my new captions handler object here and then I go through and uh, invoke gather captions passing in the path to my captions in this case this is just a constant variable uh, right here captions path and I also have a video path constant that I'll be using to point to the uh, video file as well so once we have our caption handler created we invoke gather captions passing that in and what we'll do is actually, um, in this case, we can listen using our events. And you don't necessarily have to do this, but it's a way to make sure that things are actually working. So I want to see when my captions are actually parsed. Once they're loaded in, it hands it off to the parser. And then the parser will go through and parse out all of the different captions into a data structure. So we can listen for that. And here, when that fires, we know that our captions have been parsed successfully. So if we go and look for um, captions parsed, here's our little function right here. Then I just invoke my timer. So captions timer start. And basically for that, we're just going to check our caption time for each timer tick. So every timer event and we grab the actual time from our video, so from our NetStream instance, and then we uh, push that in through captions handler. We invoke render captions, passing in the current time, and also the text field object that we want to display the captions in. So if I run this, so it'll go and compile our Swift for us, you can see it loads in the actual video and we can see the captions have been correctly loaded and parsed and so on and they appear in the text field object that I create. Now you'll notice this particular text field object has um, you know a little shadow around it and it's formatted a certain way. So to actually do that I'm just using a simple uh, text format object here so caption format uh, being a new text format object, this being Flash, of course, you'll be able to do whatever you want in terms of uh, getting this stuff to work. And of course, if you're not uh, so much into, um, 
if you're not so much into action script and you just want to use this in something like flash professional you can do that as well so for those looking to use these classes within flash professional uh, using maybe some of the components that come with flash pro i've got an example of that too so you can see here i have uh, just a basic action script 3 fla created it has three layers one for my action script one that's going to include my captions here. So for my captions, I've just got a uh, text field object of dynamic text called caption display. And here I've done some stylistic changes on it to make it yellow and change the size and so forth. Um, I've also got this set to multi-line because often uh, VTT file captions are uh, more than one line, usually two lines. So that's all set up for that. The important thing to remember is this caption display instance name, of course. And then lastly, a video layer. And inside of the video layer, I have just a simple uh, FLV playback component instance called video display. And you can see I've set the source down here to point to my actual video file. So going into the actions panel here, we can see that there's a lot less code to deal with, of course, when you're dealing with Flash Professional and using these different components because they do a lot of the video handling for us. So the only two things I'm importing here to make this pretty minimal is the actual captions handler utility and then the parse event so I can listen to and respond to that. I'm also going to be using a timer once again with an accompanying timer event. So here I define my constants for video path and captions path, just as I did in the last example. And I create my basic timer object right here. It's gonna fire every 300 milliseconds, so a few times every second. And here I bind the event listener to that to check to see if any captions align with our current time of video playback. Here I create my caption handler. So caption handler is a caption handler instance, do caption handler. And then I set captions handler dot captions parser. I add an event listener of type caption parse event dot parsed. And then I respond to that with on captions parsed. And then once captions are parsed, then we can start our captions timer, which on every tick is going to invoke this function check caption time. So what will happen here is we'll set a variable T and it's going to be set to the video display dot playhead time. That's our FLV playback component time. And then we simply say captions handler dot render captions. And again, we pass in the current time and the text field object that we want to bind our captions to. So once that's set up, all we need to do is uh, do a quick control enter. And we can see that the captions are appearing uh, just as indicated, uh, just as they did in the pure action script example, but this time inside of Flash Professional. And it works out really nicely. I can actually buzz around in here too, and you can see that uh, the captions respond appropriately. So that's pretty nice. Uh, the one thing, of course, you do have to remember is inside of your action script here, um, click on the little wrench, to change your settings and just add to your source path the actual um, edu folder to the library and really that's about all you need to do